living bacteria that are harmless to humans and, triggered by quorum sensing, glow in the dark. By themselves or in small numbers, these bacteria don't glow. They wait until they've assembled a quorum. That is, as they divide and their numbers increase, they each release a signaling molecule. We call autoinducers, but you can think of like hormones. That's made by a gene in each of the neighboring Vibrio harvii. As a way of announcing, hey, I'm here too. They have these detectors on their membranes that, that, that you can think of like little locks and keys. And the molecule goes in, and once they feel that, then they know there's neighbors around. And when enough of these little guys have gotten together to form a critical mass, they all light up at the same time. And so now if I turn the lights off in the room, you're going to see them make this beautiful bioluminescence. One bacteria isn't able to make an impact by itself, but if there are a lot of them, they can work together. So they, quorum sensing is the way they know, are there enough of us to undertake one of these group activities? It's incorrect to think of bacteria as these asocial single cells. They are individual cells, but they act in communities the exactly the way molecule was nearly have. universal. We found it originally, of course, in Vibrio harvii, but then we could show that hundreds of other bacteria made and used this molecule and that it was in every bacterium anybody's heard about. That means that even dangerous bacteria communicate by quorum sensing. Deadly pathogens turn deadly the same way that Bonnie's bacteria turn on their light. Bonnie showed that there are two types of molecules that bacteria use for communication. That bacteria are bilingual. One type of molecule is used for communicating within their own species. And the other type, discovered by Bonnie, is used to talk to every species around them. Bacteria live in unbelievable mixtures of hundreds or thousands of species, like on your teeth. There's 600 species of bacteria on your teeth every morning. And so in order to get these beautiful communities where they're working together and doing all these things, they have to know who their neighbors are. And some of those neighbors are not friendly. Using the molecule found by Bonnie's lab, bacteria know if they're surrounded by friend or foe, or when it's safe to light up or attack. If they don't have superior numbers, they won't act. Sometimes they team up across species, but mostly, it's a tiny jungle out there. There's eavesdropping and free riding and cheating, and one guy is out there making a molecule, and the guy next to it eats it, so the molecule disappears. My gosh, these bacteria talking to each other across species, and that's something that had really not been uh, an accepted idea. This was sort of just a crazy idea. So remember, what Bonnie did to show that different species of bacteria could talk to each other really changes the landscape. And when that was realized by the the rest of the scientific community, Bonnie's career took off like a is helping to shape a path to new drugs. Antibiotics currently work by killing bacteria, and more and more bacteria have grown resistant to these drugs. By using quorum sensing, it may become possible to disrupt a pathogen's communication, to neutralize it. For the foreseeable future, that's where Bonnie and her team will be putting their sweat. I want to make a drug. I want the science to be more than imaginary, where I think we're learning these fundamental principles, blah, 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 blah. I think we are doing that, but I want to do something really practical. I want to actually, in my lifetime, help people.